Canadians stay open-minded and they think through not everything needs to happen overnight, right? Make sure that you kind of capture the low-hanging fruit. So if you're, if you're heating with oil and you, you have to change your furnace because it broke, probably you'd be better off to get an electric heater or heat pump or just even regular electric heat because you're going to be better off financially and there's benefits uh, that come along with it as well. electrification will enable a lot of environmental benefits beyond just climate related benefits. If we think about transportation and electrification of transportation, that will significantly improve on the air quality of, of our cities. So, and it would come with a lot of health benefits and make, making our city more livable and healthier and more suitable for a thriving population. Uh, the other aspect as well is economic opportunities that are coming along with for the rides on this side of the equation. Think about all the heat pumps that we need to install, all the chargers that we need to install, even some of the manufacturing that we're doing on electric vehicles. So economic benefits, economic opportunities, savings associated with that. If you're like heating with oil in Nova Scotia, in Halifax, for example, if you switch over to electricity, you're gonna save a lot of cost on energy bills. So you're gonna be paying less for energy, which enables people to have more to spend in their communities. What we need to do there is to be able to manage this, help out in the most vulnerable segment of our population, but also understand to what extent is this an upfront cost versus um, a long-term increase in total cost of ownership. So for example, in the case of an electric vehicle, you can be saving a lot of money on fuel, right? Like on gasoline by, by electrifying and because the electric vehicle is much more efficient, you pay for much less energy, even though electricity is, could be more expensive per unit of energy, but you're using much less energy. So you end up with overall energy cost savings. We need to be able to communicate that to consumers and also, but also in some cases, we need to kind of be able to have financing programs that can help alleviate that sort of barrier to entry that is associated with the upfront costs and be able to kind of unlock the cost benefits that come later on. Another thing that I think is just like whether reliability is gonna be an issue, right? So do these things work? We hear a lot about heat pumps not working in cold climate. It's not to say there aren't challenges there, but we need to kind of make sure that those claims are mapped out to what reality is. Obviously there's something called cold climate heat pumps and they work up to uh, or down to minus 30 degrees. Uh, and then even after that, it's not like you're gonna be out in the cold and and just like not uh, not have heat and you're gonna freeze to death, you're gonna be able to access just a regular resistant heater that's part of the system. What it means is that it, it will just work at 100% efficiency instead of working on 200% efficiency or 300% efficiency, which is what a heat pump typically does. So worst case scenario, you're just gonna be at 100%, which is so much better than combusting fossil fuel. There's a lot of kind of misconceptions there that we need to address, but that happens with any kind of new technology or transition. And uh, I think, we'll start to see more and more and more people kind of uh, think about these technologies in a way that actually provides benefits to them. So for example, a heat pump also is an air conditioner. There's a lot of people in this country that don't have air conditioners. And if you've experienced the heat wave, you kind of know that there's still there's a significant need for conditioning air, getting thermal comfort in the, win in the summer as well as winter. So having one system that can do both is an incredible benefit that comes along for the ride as well. I think for Canadians, stay open-minded and they think through not everything needs to happen overnight, right? So make sure that you kind of capture the low-hanging fruit. So if you're, if you're heating with oil and you have to change your furnace because it broke, probably you'd be better off to get an electric heater or heat pump or just even regular electric heat. You can be part of this at a different level. It's not, not necessarily everybody needs to go all the way 100%. We have to start somewhere and uh, this is a multi-decadal transition.